Here we are at the ocean. The oceans play a vital part in the development of an ice age. What are the requirements for an ice age? First, you need much cooler summers. Winters are already cold enough in most areas where the ice occurred. The second ingredient is much more moisture, and that's where the ocean comes in with much heavier evaporation. The third mechanism is it needs to persist year after year to let the snow and ice build up year after year. So those are the three requirements for an ice age. Well, could the Genesis flood have been the uh, trigger, the climatic trigger for an ice age? Indeed, that is, is the case. How, how would that happen? How would the Genesis flood fulfill the three requirements for an ice age? First of all, the Genesis flood was a gigantic tectonic and volcanic event. And after the flood, we'd have all this volcanic ash and aerosols trapped in the stratosphere after the flood. And these reflect a lot of sunlight back to space, cooling the surface, especially the continental areas in summer. So there's where you get your, your summertime cooling is by all this volcanism. But volcanic ash and aerosols filter out within a, a matter of months to years. So there needs to be a mechanism to replenish the aerosols and aerosols are very small particles, about a micron in diameter. You need a mechanism to replenish the aerosols and ash, and indeed you do. During the Ice Age, the Earth was still not quite in equilibrium from the flood, so you had a little bit of tectonics, a lot of volcanism going off. We have a lot of ash beds and other volcanic material indicating much higher volcanism during the Ice Age, and this would replenish the volcanic ash and aerosols in the stratosphere and keep the summer cooling continuing.